So getting into picks and bans here, excuse me, I'm uh, quite exhausted. Had a long series against ELG. Well played to them. They played extremely well. And uh, how did you guys do? Uh, what we was won the... two one. Oh, nice. But uh, looks like we're going to get into picks and bans here. Ezreal, very smart ban from Bubblegum. Um, I, I love that ban because Spritz's Ezreal is so good from what I've seen. He just seems like almost unstoppable, borderline unstoppable on that champion. So uh, good ban here, but the Morgana ban is a bit interesting. Maybe they're trying, maybe to me that hints that they're going for an engage support. Possibly. Um, cause the Black Shield is a big tool here, but another support ban actually with a Thresh, another engage support possibly, but I would have swapped that out for the Alistar personally. I don't feel like Thresh offers as yeah. much as an Alistar. I entirely agree. I don't think Thresh is ban worthy here. Um, maybe that's Pablo's pocket pick. I have no idea, but again, a very nice ban with the Orianna. Orianna is one of the safest mid laners in the game and she offer, uh, also offers a lot of utility. Um, so nice, nice ban there, uh, and interesting to see the final ban of phase one here for the Bubblegum's roster here. Bubblegum is on blue side this game, and the Jax ban again, so they really don't want to play against that Jax. Uh, another interesting ban there, they do leave open the Alistar, but they also leave open Leona, that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, because Leona's, again, I believe, in such a good spot right now. Alistar on steroids, except she can't peel. Right, but she's an engaged Alistar, basically. I mean, Alistar didn't need to do much peeling last game, let's, let's be honest. Um, <clears throat> but they do leave open the Tristana, and that's going to be locked in here. So picking up Jibs and Bits, Tristana is a very good idea. But the Rakan... Very interesting. See if they're going to go for that lover's bot lane here with the Rakan and Zaya. Uh, excuse me for stuttering there for a second. Um, I mean, I guess it wasn't a stutter. I just Rakan. <laughs> but they are going to pick up that there lover's bot is. lane. So again, a really strong bot lane for uh, TBJ. Yeah, Zion and Rakan are in a very good spot right now. I hate playing against them. The Lee Sin coming out of Noob 2001. <laughs> very mechanical. <laughs> yeah. Very mechanical jungler, but, uh, you know, those silver mechanics can sometimes, uh, you never know. Yeah, I told them not to play Lee Sin. I told them. I tell pretty much every team I coach that there's a couple champions you shouldn't <laughs> no play. No way, dude. Oh, man. A Garen locked in here. That's the first Garen of the split here. And into a Zaya? I'm not sure. He's just going to get kited so easily. I'm not sure what they're going for. I think they're just going for comfort picks, but I'm not sure. Very interesting, and they are leaving up the Velkaz again that is picked up again by TVJ. And looking at the drafts, you know, I look at TVJ so far, and I'm like, that's atrociously scary. Yeah, especially... Oh, man. Oh, I don't know if Garen was the right pick. <laughs> but the ban on the Lulu here... Maybe trying to ban out the disengage. Uh, maybe a Janna ban here as well if they're going to go for that disengage ban. But that leaves open the Taric, which I would have liked to see Fierce Damage pull out here because Taric is very good into Zaya and Rakan. Um, yeah, Taric would be a very good pick here. Because he I'm... is a melee support which matches Rakan, so he's not going to get poked out too hard. It might make the Garen viable as well. Right, so I, I think... I think if you're going for a uh that kind of comp you want to go with the Taric. i don't want to say it but i think i know what they're gonna pick i don't think it's Taric though i, I like that ban ah, the kench ban tom kench is very versatile and it's another melee support that does pretty well into recon 
Um, but yeah, th maybe just tr trying to... I, I do like that ban, but I don't know what fierce damage plays, so... That could be a target ban, it could not be, but taking off the Sejuani, I love that ban from from uh, from Bubblegum there. Listening to what you said last game and taking that off the table. That was definitely a good idea. Though there's definitely other junglers that can do the same thing as Sejuani can. I mean, not as well. I think Sejuani is one of the best junglers there is right now, but... Kane. So Kane. that's nothing okay. like a Sejuani. Okay. Um, very aggressive jungler. Um to mash the Lee Sin and really challenging Noob saying you brought up Lee Sin I'm going to bring up the Kane let's see who's the better jungler um really uh stepping up to the point there in terms of what Lee Sin has to offer Kane is very versatile but Nautilus support I believe or could be yes Nautilus support is locked in um again really interesting melee support uh, again, I think Tarek is hands down better. I agree. Um, I thought Braum might have been a good pick there too. Braum would have been nice as well. Uh, does stop the feathers coming out, but yeah. Mari picked up, and it looks like a really solo queue comp to me. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking, man. Um, Malphite picked up too, so they are going to get that frontline tank there, and Malphite's in a really good state right now. At least I think he is. Um, because the, with the nerfs to the, or with the removal of Ferber, Bruisers have gotten a lot worse, so that makes Malphite a lot more viable. Um, and especially going into Garen, Malphite does fine in that matchup, and could actually have kill pressure on Garen, um, as long as Garen, Garen doesn't get his E, uh, armor shred off on Malphite. Mm -hmm. Um. But looking at this comp from Bubblegum, I just don't see where they were going with it. I think it was mostly comfort picks. Could very well be comfort picks, and that may be what 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 uh, if they're comfortable on them and they perform on them, maybe they're thinking that they can just out mechanic them, um, or just outplay them with our champions. But looking on the side of TVJ, the Malphite. The Kane, the Velkaz, the Zayat, and the Rakan. They've got a good mix of AP and AD damage. Kane can go Assassin, which I believe he would be going this game. Uh, could go um, Darken. Depends on what he wants to go here, but uh, most Kane players nowadays go Assassin. Assassin does have the higher win rate uh, after Darken was a little bit nerfed a, a while back. But um, Apparently, this is his first Kane game. Um, that's what chat was saying. Well, if, that, if true that's true, then that's going to be really interesting. Hmm. I'd uh, like to so see an invade from. He has team. one game of Kane in the Legend of the Poor O King. <laughs> <laughs> huh. We'll see how it goes. Oh, boy. But uh, now you're looking at kind of a flipped switch from what Bubblegum had last game. Lee Sin's very early game oriented. Nautilus is pretty early game oriented. Tristana does well pretty much throughout the entire game. Ari's pretty early game oriented, going for picks. And Garen is just there. Um, he does offer silence. There are a lot of things I would have replaced the Garen with. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just... Not... I don't know. I don't know what to do with the Garen. Yeah, I either need to switch out the Garen or switch out the mid, and I can't think of anything that would replace the mid. Well, they did ban out Ori. Um... Yeah, Ori might have been a good pick. They could have played uh, Zerath. Zerath does do pretty well in the bell cause. Uh, I don't know that I would like Zerath against that team, though. I think I would still rather have an Ari than a Zerath against that Ari team. Because Ari is more mobile, of course. Yeah. Um, which uh, does allow her to, to 
if she plays it correctly, I believe she can dash out of Malphite ult if she does it preemptively. Yeah. Um, like before he ults. Yeah. Um, Gotta have really good prediction skills for that. But yeah. sometimes you just know, I mean. Yeah, so it looks like we're gonna have uh gonna get in the game here soon, but I wanna focus on the bot lane a little bit here because Zaya and Rakan are obviously a super strong duo together. Mm -hmm. um, as they inherently they don't give each other that many buffs, but it's just their kits work well together. Um like they do give their them the W buffs in the increased E range. Yeah. On, but besides that, there's not a whole lot that, that they buff up on each other. And obviously those are small little buffs, they're nice, but they're not game changing. What is game changing is how well Rakan and Zaya synergize with their roots and the knockups. Exactly. I was very, very worried whenever those champs came out that they weren't gonna be viable unless they were played with each other. But they found a way they, to make it work. Yeah, I mean, they, Zaya's obviously a very good ADC. She offers a lot in terms of... She she off, she has a lot of CC for an ADC. Yeah, she has, in my opinion, the best ADC ult in the game. Oh, yeah. It can be used as so many things. It can be used as CC. It can be used as an escape. Disengage. Mostly disengage, but... Well, I mean... It, in, a, in a 2v2, Zabata can kind of be used as engage. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like her feather mechanics are pretty interesting. Yeah, um, how those work. I love those. And Rakan, again, a very nice champion. Very well designed. <laughs> I think Zaya and Rakan are one, one of the best champions released in the past yeah, they're pretty years. Cool. Finally, I got a support that doesn't feel like a slug. He's the only support that feels as quick as he is. I mean, Bard's fast, but no one's like agile. You know what it's I mean? Like Rakan is. Yeah, exactly. Um... But Flame Fox picking up the Dark Harvest there, I like that on the cane. Uh, it does allow for that one-shot potential. Ooh. I prefer uh, Electrocute. On cane? Yeah, honestly. Huh, interesting. I, I, I don't know. I've always preferred Dark Harvest, but maybe It's you rolling a lot faster. All right. You ready? Uh, you yeah, needing at five again? Yeah, just let me know when you hit five seconds. All right. Well, still... Uh, Waiting. Yeah. Huh. Uh, NA spectator. Okay, here we go. Five. I'm at five yep, now. Perfect. We're fine. Sweet. Um. But but going back to what we were talking about with the bot lane, I haven't seen Nautilus support played a lot. Um, he kind of fell out of meta when Nautilus top got nerfed. Yeah. In season six. Um. I haven't really seen him since much then. He does have the most CC of any champion in the game, though. Um, yeah, but I mean, there's so many others that are so close that it's... Like Leona, example. She's got practically the same ult. You know, it's it's a ranged engage. Well, Leona's is she, AoE. Nautilus has a single target ult that knocks up on the way. Yeah, but you know what I mean. It's it's the same concept <laughs> if you're trying to pick someone. I they love both that. Got... Oh, man. That taunt. They're breaking it down. Uh, Very nicely coordinated there from Spritz and Pablo. But uh, going back to what you were saying, sorry. I've completely forgotten by now, dude. I'm curious to see how this lead plays, though. the classic spam taunt. But, I always tell the teams I coach to never play Lee. It's just too hard for he is what you get. He is extremely difficult to pull off. Yeah. But I mean, you see like Mike Young and stuff, and you like, you look at it and you're like, oh, I could do that. And yeah, it looks like, pretty so, easy. Yeah, when you start playing, you're like, holy shit. This is impossible. But uh, Malphite actually with the Corrupting Potion start, going for a bit of the mana sustain. I normally start Dorn Shield on Malphite, but, uh, or even Dorn's Ring if you're going more for mana. So interesting decision there with the Corruption Pot. Uh, I don't think I've played Malphite in ages. Uh, very okay. good hook okay. here on the V. Let it go, let it go, not. Let it go, not. Let it go, not. Uh, but 
it was a good trade until they overstay their welcome. Yeah, they walked into the they walked into the incoming minion wave. And the minions early game really bad. It didn't end up being that bad just because Tristana is level one. I feel like it's so much better than Zaya's level one in extended trades. Mm -hmm. Malphite is out of mana here, but you gotta watch out for that bot lane level 3. That's where Zaya and Rakan really start to pick up. Level 3. So keep in mind that that power spike is very big. Nice hook there from the Nautilus going on to the Rakan here, but he's taking a lot of damage and he does go down there to the, the blade color from Zaya. Tied it into the cannon and okay. If they followed her, she could have fought that. But Tristana needed to heal there and Nautilus needed to not take that hook. He, all, he had flash and exhaust on. Are you serious? He oh, both had he had both summoners up. That's not good. Uh, and Tristana had both of hers up as well, just for the Reconic. Uh, so just okay. deciding against blowing any summoners there, I disagree with that. But uh, you can what? flame them after the game. Kane got poacher stick. What? Dude, that yeah, item's not even... He didn't even gink a lane, I don't think. I don't think he... I think he just cleared his camps and then went back. So, Poacher's Dirk. That means he's going for counter jungling, and that item is literally in, like, 0.1% of game. So... Uh, different, for sure, but Ari misses the charm there. Nice disengage from the Valkyrie. If right. that charm landed, that would have been a kill. That was not... Alright, I don't want to flame this guy. That was not nice disengage. That was very bad on both our, the mid laners and the gen leaders part there. That's why I say don't play Lee Sin. He missed Q. If he was playing something like Sedge, you can just get up in their face and start smacking them. You don't have to worry about landing skill shots. It's so much better. Like, right. that's a prime example of what I was talking about earlier right there. And you could even see it in Ari, which isn't as skill shot intensive as Lee. She is like, a difficult champion though. She is. And but, just there, like, if they had, like, guaranteed CC, that's a kill. Yeah. So, uh, Rakan going in here, does get to find the double mock up. Look at the Zion. Questionable by Rakan. Coming out here. She oh, Tristan, you gotta stay there and fight that. You still she got heal. Yeah, and your minions. Yet. Nice engage from the Nautilus. And forcing the Rakan to flash, but Kane is up here on the top side, going with, finding the W slow. And Malphite is out of mana though, so that looks like they're not gonna be able to pick up anything on the top side. Bot lane, Lee Sin is here. Go this on, is man. a very good opportunity for him. He needs to ward hop and Q right now. F oh my Another lord. Another prime example of why I always oh tell my, my teams you shouldn't play Lee. Sometimes it's hard to realize it whenever you Oh, nice from the Nautilus! He just sent the hook by there onto the Zaya. Zaya's forced to start. Rakane is going to W and E back, but I can't. Oh, my eyes. <laughs> He just, he had wards too. He could have just, or he didn't have any wards, but he could have just W'd to Nautilus instead of flashing. Zaya's so gonna come back with a BF sword. I, I just want to point out back. here real quick. Well, we watched that Lee Sin flash miss the Q. He could have easily just W'd to either Trisana or Nautilus and gotten the same distance. I'm not sure that pick was the best call. I mean, I've said it like, oh, they need to back. They totally need to back. Looks like they are going to back off from this. Hey, there we go. Uh, Garen is falling behind in CS. Uh, Ari's about 10 behind of this Velkaz, who's been playing very consistently on Velkaz. Looks like that's a comfort pick for him, but he has been playing very well on it. Um. He is able to zone that Zori, uh, that Ori off, but he has to be careful for the level 6 engage that Ori does have with the charm and ignite. Um, she could just ult and uh, find that charm, get the Q damage and the true damage back from the from the Q. Uh, the orb of deception there, picking up a lot of damage, but uh, looks like they're just going to farm it out. Malphite with a roam here to the mid lane. He does have ultimate, but Ori is going to go down towards the bot side, maybe expecting him to come down, or maybe just warding that infernal drake um lee sin should be bot side of his jungle right now he should be clear he should have cleared his red when he was doing wolves and then he should have went to go gain bot and ari should have followed and i also like to point out that he didn't go for the tracker's knife first he went for coalfield so he is gonna have 
even less words to jump to. Yeah. Um. But uh, pretty even down here on the bot side, surprisingly. Yeah. I got him out of this. They are poking Lee Sin's very, He's looking for something. He has to go around the other side. They have no vision, but he's not in a position right now where he has no ward, so he can't just ward hop over, but he doesn't have his flash available either as he burned that in the last gank. But it looks like they're trying to bait something here. Uh, mm, the minion wave is going to push towards them now. As Zaya kills that last minion. Going for the engage here. Uh, Tristana, here comes Lee Sin, queuing over. Does find the Q under the Rakan, takes a Q. Does get rooted up there, and he's just gonna take a terrible trade. Wait, 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 wait. How is he out of energy? How is he out of energy? He uh, used two abilities there that I saw. His Q and his W. I don't know. Very confused. But then again, I don't play Lee Sin. I don't know how much his abilities cost. Um, this Garen pick get... is not a good idea. Another unsuccessful thing, and Garen's getting uh, beaten up by this rock in the top lane. Um, indeed, Malphite is rock solid, so uh, Garen's having an issue there, but he's going for an engage here. Does find the charm under the Tristana. Nice flash good up deal, from the Tristana, actually. Uh, good nice deal flash and heal. Um, but that is two subs burned on the Tristana, which is pretty big. That they can just go for an engage next time. Lisa does not have six yet, and uh, Garen is having issues with the Malphite in the top lane. Ari's having major issues in CS. They both have yet to back in the mid lane, so uh, it looks like Ari's gonna get her first back in here. Garen, I don't believe you win that, my friend. Um, Malphite no. can just uh, ult and then clap you um, with his W there, but. Uh, they are going to get pressure on this bot side turret. Triss is coming down, but the desynchronized back timers makes it so that Triss is going to be down here alone. And they are going to be pressuring this tower. Maybe able to take first tower. Possibly. Tristana is here. She has to eat. Oh, first. Oh, no, 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 and the Rakan is going to miss the knock up there. Watch out for Maybe the Maybe she can bait it for enough for not all this. And uh, they yeah, aren't going to find anything there, but uh, Kane is on the top side here looking for a gank here. Malphite with a beautiful ult there, finding the uh, forces the flash into the Garen. Kane should have E'd and then W'd instantly so he could get inside the Garen there, but uh, unfortunately he misplayed that a bit. And um, they are going to burn that flash for the ultimate. Uh, that's a worth trade um, for, for uh, <coughs> excuse me, for, for red side, but. Leeson has not had any impact on the map, and uh, yeah, Leeson's not a scaling jungler, so this is concerning. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. slowly but surely, Belkaz is up about 30 CS in the mid lane, getting a full Morello Nomicon on that back there, 10 minutes in. Very nice for him. Almost perfect CS, actually, from Belkaz. Actually, that is perfect CS. It's pretty incredible. Uh, very well done by him. Yeah, I like Velkaz's auto attacks. No projectile. Feels so smooth. I like this call here. I do like this call. This is a very smart yeah. rotation down here. Taking this Infernal Drake and... Uh, we they have know, mentioned... Uh, they they have to get something. out here. Um, they, they really do. Red team should have gone in on them. No! no! Oh my lord! No! You already got the dragon! <laughs> Just take the victory, man! Nautilus is trolling, flashes in, and now Ari's gonna go down for- She has to flash, oh, Rakan flash, finding the charm on the Tristana and the Lee Sin here. And Nautilus just, uh, took that and, uh... That didn't even look like they communicated that because all of a sudden Nautilus just flashes- oh, well played, Nice well charm from Ari! Zaya well is done. gonna go down there and a one for one- Garen's got TP, Garen. Garen, TP. Garen mm. is not going to channel the teleport. He had a control word there in the back that you see Rakan walking past right now. That would have been a fantastic word for him to TP to. But he might has to be careful been. because Malphite can cancel it with his ult. So, it might have been a good place to TP to whenever uh, Nautilus had gotten caught as well. But if he TP'd, Mal Malphite would have TP'd too. And I'm not sure that Garen would have been more valuable that fight than Malphite would have. Right, it looks like Garen's going for the Black Cleaver Hero build, but 
We we mentioned I, I mentioned the CS lead now 40 in the mid lane, and slowly but surely, TBJ has built up almost a 4k gold lead with only three kills just because of how far ahead they are in terms of CSing in almost every lane besides bot. And no one's popping off just yet, but they do have a little bit gold, a little bit more gold on pretty much everyone. Well, a 4k gold lead at 12 minutes is substantial. Um, yeah, it is, lot. but what I'm saying is it's not all on one person. It's a little bit right, spread out, so you don't feel it as much. Most of that gold's on that Vel'Koz, um, because of that CS lead. Ah, you're right, actually. Yeah, he does have a lot. Um, but Garen is going to keep getting bullied here by the Malphite. Again, Garen not really doing a whole lot. And laning is where Garen's supposed to strive, so... Yeah, that Garen pick, in retrospect, was worth nothing. I mean, you got to play against Malphite, which isn't spectacular in lane by any means. And later on, I mean, Malphite's going to be so much more valuable than Garen is in fights. Right, Malphite has one of the best ultimates in the game, so... In, in terms of uh, value, you're, you lost a lot on that Garen pick, and you also lost a lot in terms of the Lee Sin pick as well. We mentioned it earlier, but he hasn't done anything in the early game where really both of these champions are supposed to strive, but Vel'Koz with 135 CS at 14 minutes, near perfect CS, um, quite, quite incredible for a gold player. Nautilus. Nautilus getting collapsed on here. He is pretty tanky. This might end up being a really good bait, but they're too smart for it. They are going to back out here. They got to be careful because they don't have vision past that. Uh, Vel'Koz, they do see him on those uh, zombie wards there. Uh, one of the best runes in the game, in my opinion. Yeah. Very valuable. Uh, but they got to watch out for an engage here. Nautilus is here, but... Tristana is a level up now on the Zaya just because she's been in lane for longer, but Vel'Koz is up, or, or he was up for a brief second there, two levels on the Ari. Um, and Ari's not farming bad either, it's just Vel'Koz has not missed any, not missed a beat with his CS. Nautilus just clearing out vision there. They are going to go onto the top side here. Malphite finds the old Vel'Koz under the old man. Garen flashes out. That is completely unnecessary to burn your flash there. Um, he just has to accept that he's dead at that point instead of burning the flash. But Ari does find a charm under the Rakan. Does get the knock up onto the Rakan as well. They are going to make a trade here. Ari is going to try to find the kill onto the Zaya as well. Zaya still burned. Doesn't have old. I. Ugh. Ari does find a nice charm there. Jim's a bitch picking up a kill and Ari picking up well a kill. Done. So a very nice return there from Bubblegum, actually. Yeah. Very nice return. Red team could have taken advantage of two things. Top, they could have potentially tried to get top turret, and they definitely could have gotten uh, Rift Herald there. Right, so it They're like... ahead, but they're not pushing their advantage as much as they were last game. Right, they still are up 4k gold, which is a substantial amount of gold. But they are going to pick up this outer turret here, and the standing gold from these turrets is still a lot for TBJ, or from uh, for Bubblegum to pick up here. And that's going to be a nice pick up there for, for the Tristana, picking up that gold. Uh, so as you see there, the gold lead shrunk to about 3k now, so that's about a 1k from that tower. Uh, very big influx to the Tristana, yeah. and she's probably going to finish up her, uh, her first item. But uh, looks like Garen's just uh, actually doing pretty well into the Malphite right now. But uh, Zaya and Rakan trying to find they an can fight. They, they should fight that. They should fight that. Lee Sin and Ari on their way. Even if Nautilus dies here, they should be able to double kill are... that lane. Uh, Nautilus should have stayed there. He just... Zoning the Tristana. They do find the charm there. Very nice. Lee Sin... Oh, Good whoa! About time, oh, man. Nice with Lee Sin finding that there. But she is going to get killed there by the Zaya. Ari needs to find a they kill through one of this cane. Lisa they taking the Q like a monkey! Oh. oh man. And now Ari's going in, missing the Q, and she's gonna go down as well! And oh. that went from great to horribly. 
I think I should add Ari to my list of champions that I don't want teams to play. <laughs> I mean... Lee Sin had a very nice it. kick there. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, a nice kick, but unfortunately... A lot of miss spells by the Ari caused a lot of trouble for the rest of the team, and Lisa and taking that kid, they could have just gone out with a two for two, and that would have been fine for them at this stage. If if they had hit everything there, it would have been a lot smoother than a two for two. I think they might have only lost one. If Nautilus had stayed there and not left Tristana, I think they might have only lost one there. Right, but then Lisa took the Q back in Suicide to try to kill the Kane, and then Ari sees the Kane low, and she goes in as well, but Kane still has ult up, and he's just gonna go inside of that fox, and that sounded really sexual. I was supposed to keep it PG-13, dude. Come on. I was just saying what he does. <laughs> Rakana is gonna go down here, but Zaya gets a three-man root. Belka's ult. Belka's ult oh, picks man, up another... Brutal. And, that is uh, brutal. Velkaz again with perfect CS. I. This, this uh, Lee Sin needs to start saving his insects for Velkaz rather than their bot lane. It's kind of crazy to me to think that uh, Velkaz, 193 CS in 18 minutes. That's insane for a gold player. There you go. Nice there you charm. Go. Good job. She is gonna find a double! Nice, nice, okay. What they need to do now is they need to push mid and try and get some damage on tower. No, Tristana's gotta stay mid. Try to get something Don't do it, Tristana. That, that is their two damage sources down. Velkov's falling there, picking up his first death of the game, and uh, as well as the Zaya, uh, actually died, uh, dying a whole lot in this game. Uh, four deaths so far. Half of the, the team's deaths, but uh... Malphite and Garen just uh, dueling it out up here in the top lane. Garen, or Malphite is just stacking armor right now. And uh, Garen going for a trade here. He does have that back cleaver, but it doesn't look like he's doing a whole lot right now. Just a wet noodle fight currently. Getting the silence yeah. there, but he's got to be careful of the Malphite ult. Garen doesn't have E activated, but Malphite is nearly out of mana. And uh, looks like they're just both going to back off here. But the junglers are both going to meet each other here. Lee Sin is down a level. Uh, Garen is pretty tanky. Lee Sin does go out. Oh, he ults and go. kicks back into the tower. Lee Sin does not win this. He Don't needs to back out of this immediately. And instead, he tries again for the kill. Even mm. though he's inherently weaker of this, of this, of, ah, uh, currently that 3 0 and 4 Kane. But Ari is up here trying to make a play out of this Kane. Kane doesn't have Ari needs to get Khan mid. is here. Ari needs to land. Actually, not. Nah, they're fine in mid. Unfortunately. Looks like they're going to try for an engage onto the Ari, but they aren't able to find anything. And Nautilus needs to go for an engage onto this Velkons here. That was a perfect opportunity. He's very overextended. Zaya is just going to continue to shove in bot lane, and they are going to give up mid lane priority for that as well, trying to chase down this Zaya. Um, just poor wave management right now for Bubblegum. Tristana does have that completed IE and Zeal. Uh, Zaya does have the completed static shiv and a BF as well as a pickaxe. Um, but Tristana is does have a decent CS lead for herself. Yeah. And, um, Lee Sin here going to get caught out by the Velkaz. Absolutely obliterated by the beam there that uh, that Velkaz ult and he goes down and that's uh, his fifth death uh, currently on Lee Sin. Red needs to capitalize. Looking back onto the top side here, just like we're gonna have a little bit of trading back and forth between two top laners. Nothing too entertaining here. It looks like Garen's stuttering a bit. Uh, may have uh, misclicked there, but basically not even their touching lead. the Malphite at this point. The Dilly Dallin. They didn't get anything off the pick and mid. Build real quick. That's disgusting. But they didn't get. Did you see that? They got nothing off of the pick and uh, mid. Malphite has. Instead, they all just two rotated top. Everyone should have. Gauntlets. Or, uh, two frozen hearts. Uh, oh, Garen why? Why? In, trying to pick up a kill there, but just goes down for it. His it's team wasn't even bro. with him. Very weird decision from him there. And they are going to have to give up that tower as well. And, um. You know, Don't go out that far. Don't go out that far, Tris. Snowballing this game again. Uh, Ari is going to take a lot of damage. Q. 
and they have to back out of this. Malphite doesn't have ult, but Velkos is just doing so much damage from the back, and they're not in a good situation right now. They have, they're down 6k gold, and now down 7k as they pick up that mid lane turret. Leeson is going to try to fight the Kane here. Tristana is doing a little bit of damage to him, but not a whole lot. Kane's they going back that. in, trying for the re-engage. Leeson going to take the kick. Nice, nice insect actually there. Does pick up the kill there. I don't know if he needed to do that. Uh, very nice job by the Lee Sin. Nice insect. And the Tristana is pretty huge right now. But the fact of the matter is, is that they're just so far behind everywhere else. Velkos has an 80 CS lead uh, in, the, in the mid lane. And that's absolutely massive right now. Picking up that completed Ludens uh, as well as an Abyssal or the uh, Blasting Wand. But looks like Blue Team is going to try to start Baron here. Ari's tanking. And this is very risky for them. They need to back off this objective because Velkaz is just going to burn down the Nautilus. Down he goes, and that's just going to be a free kill for TBJ. And now they can pressure Baron as a very bad Baron call there has started. And uh, I believe Logan is AFK, so I'm casting by myself right now. <laughs> uh, I've been right Alphite here. <laughs> I've been waiting for it. Two... Can you hear me? Uh, Wait, ice hello? Or frozen hearts, which is uh, very interesting. Hello? Build. Can you hear me? As they all have a unique Wait, passive, so uh, they're not doing a whole lot there, but they are going to give up midline priority here. Ari is down bot to answer the Malphite. Yes, yes. They should be sending Garen down there instead of keeping him uh, in base where he was currently. Looks like Garen's going to go mid lane. They're just going to siege down this tower right now. And uh, Ari looking for an engage there. She doesn't find it. Nautilus flashing for no reason, and Ari getting melted by the Velkaz actually there. Rakan fighting a two-man turn in the backline. Rakan's actually doing a lot in the backline. Look at the Velkaz ult shredding through everybody. That's a triple kill for the Velkaz. And Malphite flashing into the Tristana. That's an ace for, for Bimo Jenkins. And they might end the game off of that. I don't think they can end the game. Yo, Velkaz can you hear me? doing huge amounts of damage. <laughs> Yo, someone message him or get in contact with him. Yo, dude. Hello? And they are going to look to try to end here, possibly. Ari is up in six they seconds. Take one of they these. are I trying to take this tower. Them. They are looking for the end here. Kane is split pushing bots, so they're not coordinating this as a team. The minions are here. Ari is looking to hold this as much as possible. The rest of the red, uh, blue team is spawning now, but they are able to hold for now. They do lose the Nexus Tower, and they are down about 12, 13k in gold. And uh, not looking in good shape right now as another, uh, as uh, they're looking to try to clear out minions here in the bot side. Uh, red team could just force Baron at this point, lock down minion in the game because they are so far ahead. And right now, Velkos again, look at that CS 243 to Ari's 150, almost up on a full 100 CS right now, doing extremely well for himself. And it looks like they're Hello? just gonna be resetting here. Uh, taking their advantage is going to go spend that gold that they that they uh, took. <laughs> Malphite picking up a war mogs, and uh, I messaged him on Discord still too. Still on that one item of the black cleaver. He is down about 50 CS. Ari is down about 100 CS. Uh, Tristana is the only one doing decently for uh, for blue side here, and feels bad, man. Uh, Velkaz is 8, 1, and 8, Kane's 4, 1, and 4, Malphite's 2, 1, and 3, Zaya still has 7 kills, even though she has died a lot. She has 17 kill participation, so that's, she's been involved in a lot of kills, but, uh, currently right now, this is just not looking great. I think I'll just try and talk whenever he stops. It's like, I can't interrupt him anymore, like, he can't hear me. Alright, I'm not minimized anymore. I wasn't watching the game. I was trying to figure out how to get in contact with him. Let's see. But, uh... Hello? <laughs> Very... Uh... Kane needs to be with this team. If Kane was there, they could fight it easy. They're hesitating, and they should be, but...
All blue needs is a ward on Baron, and they can sit right there, and they'll be safe. They should not have engaged that. Everyone's there. It's a 5v5. The reason they shouldn't engage that is because red team wasn't threatening anything. Their inhib was already dead. They needed to let red team make the mistake. Alright, now you can hear me? Yeah, I've been able to hear you, dude. Alright, I can't hear you. Hold on. I need to restart Discord or something. And then there was one. Yeah, this is looking like game as well. To be honest, I think first game was better played by both teams. Obviously, red team was kind of messing around this game, but there were still some mistakes that they made that were unrelated to them doing a weird build or stuff like that. Same goes for blue team, but I mean, I don't think they're messing around. I think there was some tilt, but can he still not?